the Gaiden spin-off quadrilogy of the Surtek Wizardry series of RPG games marked the first Japan-developed sub-series in the franchise. There were four games in this collection, three of which were released on the Game Boy, with a fourth on the Super Famicom. These were hardcore JRPGs, that's a fact, and were certainly not for the weak at heart. Limited to Japanese release, the three titles have since been given the fan translation treatment to open them up to curious English speakers. Japanese language RPGs are plentiful on the system, this we know, but few are renowned for being great, like this trio. The story behind the first part in the Wizardry Gaiden adventure concerns an artifact known as the Staff of Ganilda. This staff provides magical protection to the locale in which many Wizardry titles take place in, the city of Lilgamin. Unfortunately, the power of the staff is waning, leading to the Queen dispatching her sister, Sorks, and the rogue mage Taros into one of the many nearby dungeons to try and resolve this crisis. The nightmare was only exacerbated when neither returned from the quest. It's up to you to create a party of adventurers, find them, and save the city. The first thing to do in-game is to create your fearless band of warriors. You can take with you up to six individuals who subscribe to various classes and skill sets. The main city screen has several icons. The top right one has two crossed swords and is the first place to visit. This is the training screen, although you don't so much train as simply choose your characters. You have various stat points designated initially in six areas and a handful of bonus points that you yourself need to attribute to them. Strength determines your physical damage done and the hit rate for all physical attacks. Vitality is the amount of HP a character can receive when they level up. Agility determines the likelihood of you avoiding attacks, fleeing or disarming traps successfully. Intelligence is the effectiveness and success rate of mage spells. Piety is a similar thing but for priest spells. Luck is your resistance to status effects and also affects the chances of rare items to drop. Where you add the points decides what classes the character can be assigned to. There are eight classes, not all of which are attainable at first, and all have certain stat requirements. For instance, a character can only be considered a fighter if they have at least 11 in strength. A mage needs 11 intelligence, and so on. You also have to choose the character's alignment, good, neutral, or evil. Not only does this decide whether characters can team together, you obviously can't have good and evil in the same party, but certain classes can only be populated by certain alignments. Samurai can only be good or neutral, ninjas can only be evil, and so on. Once you've created enough players, go to Gilgamesh's tavern to sign them up. Afterwards, the castle in the middle of the screen will be your go-to place for quest advancements. Once you find out what the Queen wants you to do, the bottom right icon will take you to the dungeon. It turns out that Taros is conducting illegal experiments in this dungeon, and Princess Sorks has gone missing. Our quest thusly begins. I'm going to let you go into this dungeon somewhat blind for a minute. Done it? Did you die? Did you die quickly and often? Me too. Like I say, this game is about as hardcore as RPGs get in my experience. Yes, you'll need to grind your sword arm to a stump to get anywhere. Don't descend further than the first floor until everyone in your party is at least level 3. I'm not kidding. You'll need to climb out, heal, go back in, and so on. Usually battles only occur when you open doors, so at least you probably won't get sprung upon and die on your way back to the inn. Stick near the entrance too, because as you may notice, these labyrinths are really confusing until you get a map spell later on. I could go on forever about the storyline and gameplay, as it is truly excellent, but I'm running out of space and there are other things that need mentioning. Anyway, if you've played an RPG before, and if you're tackling this I sincerely hope you're no rookie, then you'll have no trouble figuring out what to do. It's just being good enough to do it that's the problem. What needs remarking on is the dungeon graphics. They are pretty special, it has to be said. The textures and draw distance are outstanding, drawn tile-based from a first-person perspective. You rotate 90 degrees by pressing left and right, turn right around by pressing down. Up or A moves you forward. There are lots of passageways. It's a veritable maze down there. 
the way that all these different corridors, chutes and doorways are put together look great. It's a good thing too because it's so easy to get lost and would be made worse if you couldn't tell what you were looking at. I adore the images of the creatures you'll be fighting and the boss battles look truly immense. The music is right out of a typical fantasy fiction game, with melodies ranging from folky to suitably dark and menacing. Sound effects are used sparingly, but are always effective. A cool feature of these three games is that you can transfer your characters forward through the series, garnering a real attachment to the lives you've created. It's not an easy thing to do, you have to have found and sold all items in the game, but then you'll get a password that lets you keep your intrepid heroes for the next adventure, coming in 1992. Should you try Wizardry Guide N1 Suffering of the Queen? I'm not sure. How brave are you feeling right now? Thanks so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts on the game down below, and if you can spare a second, give the review a quick thumbs up, it really helps out. Subscribe to the Portable Power Podcast for a new Game Boy review every day from Monday to Friday. Or alternately, new episodes of the podcast drop every Saturday and Sunday on whichever platform you get your pods. See you later on.